10 to 6. Steve Coogan, also known as TV's Alan Partridge. Aha! Yeah, him has escaped a lengthy driving ban after arguing he needs to drive in order to keep playing his character. The comedian was clocked driving his Porsche at 36 in a 30 zone because he already and because he already had nine points on his driving license, he should have faced an automatic six month ban. Instead, he argued that his Alan Partridge character. Aha! Yeah, uh, could not be filmed on public transport and needed to be able to drive. Uh, so got away with a two-month ban instead. Nick Freeman, celebrity defence lawyer specialising in traffic and speeding offences, also known as Mr Loophole. Hi, Nick. Hi, Andrew. Nice to talk to you. Thanks for your time. Um, how How is it in situations like this that we, we, we see punishments uh, for crimes kind of uh, diluted, lessened somewhat? Well, the courts follow the law, and what's happened here is he wouldn't suffer exceptional hardship, but the 15 to 20 professionals he's got lined up to start filming this next programme, this I think it's a series or a film, due to start in October, they apparently would not be able to find alternative employment between now and then. And what we're told is that they would suffer exceptional hardship. I don't know whether the individual circumstances of each one has been put forward. Um, but it's certainly not on the basis of his exceptional hardship. It's on the basis of their exceptional hardship. They're the, the sort of potential innocent victims. And where there are innocent victims, and often, no, normally it's in relation to children or other family members when somebody loses their employment, um, the, the courts are more persuaded because those people aren't really culpable and they will be the ones who really suffer the dire consequences. If Alan Partridge wasn't able to film his particular production, he, he's not going to be on the breadline, one wouldn't imagine, whereas I suppose these other people might be. Um, yeah, so so, that, so that, that's the reason the courts come to the decision. When, when, when you get to 12 points, if you're convicted, it's important to bear in mind he did plead guilty, he didn't try and fight it, there may have been ways around it, but he, he held his hands up, yes, I was doing 36, he could have asked for a short ban for the offence, which met, would have meant that he wouldn't have actually got to 12 points, but he hasn't done that. He's actually been given the three points. And the court then has to say, if there's no exceptional hardship, the minimum period is six months. Or if there is exceptional hardship on the balance of probabilities, we have a discretion and we could ban him for longer, six months, not at all, or for a lesser period. And what they've done here is they've banned him for two months which is over 56 days, and the, the significance of that is if he comes back in a three-year period and falls foul of the totting up provisions again, he's then liable for a minimum 12-month ban as opposed to a six-month ban. So they have hung a sort of Damocles over his head to some extent, and he has, of course, been disqualified under the totting up provisions, albeit for a shorter period of time. Now, broadening this out to a, to a general point, and if you're arguing a, a similar case for someone, possibly someone well-known, um, at what stage do they just throw the book at you? If, if someone was doing 100 in a 30 zone, what, what would happen then? Well, look, if it, ironically, if you've been doing 100 in a 30 zone, they would have probably said, we'll disqualify you for the offence. I mean, actually, if he was doing 130, only, I'd like to think he'd have been charged with dangerous driving. Well, yes, but um, as, as and, a general and, point, we're putting Steve so, Coogan well, aside. Yeah, it, I mean, I think the answer to your question is celebrity status has nothing to do with this case. I know he's a celebrity. But they, they've not... I mean, it, it, it's an uphill playing field for celebrity. Uh, and as I say to you, it, it's because of the other people who will be affected, not because of him. Okay. And he's the beneficiary of the other people, if you like. That's uh, the fortunate thing from his perspective. The courts have a discretion to look at each case on its own merits. And if, if someone, for example, was going particularly fast, suppose he was doing, he had nine points on his license, suppose he was doing 70 miles an hour and he had exceptional hardship, the same circumstances, the court might say, look, you do have exceptional hardship, but we're going to exercise our discretion and we're still going to disqualify you for six months because you have a scant disregard for the speed limit. You've been grossly exceeding it and we're going to ban you for six months or even longer. You know, so it, all of the exceptional hardship argument does is it gives the court a discretion. And if someone's going particularly quickly, the court will be perfectly entitled to say, yeah, we, we have a discretion. There is exceptional hardship on the balance of probabilities. But, but as you, to use your expression, we're going to throw the book at you and you can do your six months or even longer. It's fascinating. Very, very good. Thank you, Nick. Thank you so much for your time. Nick Freeman, celebrity defence lawyer known as Mr. Lupo. You may, you may, you may... 